Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video, one of the short ones for the week. And today we have on the channel Thomas DeLauer. We're going to be reacting to an Instagram reel that he posted. And honestly, I have a few saved, but I have no idea which one I'm going to click on. And I don't remember any of them. So with that being said, we're going to waste no time. We're going to get right into this and we're going to react very quickly and put him right where he's wrong, which is probably everywhere. So let's go ahead and do it. As you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean that there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness, disorder, and or disease someone may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product in doing such a thing is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule, known as Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product and any heart health outcome. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many others from the Cerule company, refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. Here's a few ways to combat the inflammation that comes from consuming sugar. Oh, good. So perpetuating people's sugar addiction because they don't actually want to give it up. Sugar causes inflammation, so don't get rid of the actual culprit of inflammation. Sugar being primarily glucose that people consume, well, it depends. I mean, a lot of people consume fructose too, but just to be sort of prototypical here with my example, glucose is the primary sugar that people consume, and glucose is a six-carbon aldehyde, and if you didn't know this about aldehydes, Thomas, I say this on my channel incessantly, aldehydes, even in vastly small concentrations, destroy lipid rafts, tear cell membranes to pieces, bind to DNA to promote carcinogenesis by causing mutations to it, and in high enough concentrations but still relatively low, kill cells outright. So why wouldn't you just stop eating it, considering the fact that Carbohydrates are not essential for human health whatsoever, exogenous ones particularly, actually. And we can create all the glucose that we need via a demand-driven process within our body called gluconeogenesis. Why don't you just tell people to stop eating sugar? Oh, it's because you actually profit off of being sensational and not actually just giving the truth out. You absolute rapacious shill. You head. I do not have a lot of respect for you, Thomas. I do not. You know you're wrong on this stuff, and yet you profit off of it, so you continue to f***ing do it. Disclaimer before we start. All food will cause inflammation. Yes, it does. It is an evolutionary adaptation, an adaptive response, evolutionarily speaking, for whenever we would perhaps consume something that was toxic that we serendipitously discovered while frolicking about through the woods, historically speaking, ancestrally speaking, as a species. It's a way in which the immune system can ready the troops, so to speak, for if that food that we serendipitously discovered and decided to eat were to be toxic, thus disallowing us from dying, or at least dying as easily or as quickly. Yeah, all food causes inflammation, even the least inflammatory foods, that being, mm, oh yeah, the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals primarily. The way that it is, it just seems as though sugar does it a bit more. No, it doesn't seem as if. It's not ostensible. It is a fact, Thomas. It is a biochemical hard fact. Sugar kills cells. Juice or pomegranate extract. So sugar. So in order to cut down on sugar cravings and reduce inflammation, eat something that's inflammatory and has sugar in it. Pomegranates contain lots of polyphenols. Polyphenols are touted as being good in the health sphere because people are f***ing stupid. And also people are misanthropic. The people distributing and promulgating this information are misanthropic, whether they realize it or not. Incompetent. Polyphenols are plant antioxidants. Plant antioxidants are only antioxidants for the plant, not for human beings. In fact, they're pro-oxidants for human beings. Resveratrol, found in red wine. Curcumin, found in turmeric, for example, have been shown to outright cause cause aberrations in DNA. They damage DNA. Curcumin, particularly in the gastric mucosa of human beings. The entire reason our glutathione status or our antioxidant status within our bodies goes up or increases as a result of consuming these antioxidants is because of them acting and functioning as pro-oxidants within us. It's not because they're acting as antioxidants within us or else our body wouldn't have to release its own antioxidants. An interesting study published in the Journal of Food Agriculture and Chemistry. You don't know how to interpret science. Stop talking. The evidence that you are relying on is not evidence. It's evidence of your f***ing ignorance, Thomas. Actually, these studies are often poorly randomized. They're never controlled because you can't control for human beings and actually have very poor statistical significance and statistical power due to its small sample size or its usual small sample size, rather. Most of the time, they don't even attain N of 30, Thomas. They're poor associations with no control over the other confounders, the other myriad multitude slew 
slew of other confounders that almost undoubtedly, invariably, had an impact on the results, which once again are associations. If you've watched my videos long enough, or if you've read my book, you'll know how important it is to ground electrically to the Earth. However, I am of course aware of the fact that this is impractical for many people, whether it be due to work or some other interfering lifestyle factor. But there is good news, however, which is that there is a particular machine that makes water infused with hydrogen ions that, when drunk, recreate the exact same effects of grounding without the need to actually be physically grounded to the earth. This makes it much easier to reap the same benefits of grounding if one has no access to the physical earth or a grounding mat throughout the day. If you want to learn more about this machine, like where to buy it and how it works, refer to the links in the description below. That demonstrated that when pomegranate... No, that ostensibly demonstrated to ignorant people, to impressionable people, that like the dopaminergic fast cuts that you do, and the way that you talk, and the way that you look. Back ...was consumed. It seemed to reduce... Seemed to. There's your key word. It's ostensible, apparent or purported, but perhaps not actual. That's what it is, Thomas. And also, it seems to have done that through a reductionist thinking by ignoramuses and charlatans glycation end products significantly. In fact, it reduced... <sighs> Advanced glycation end products are the result of a few things, but primarily f***ing sugar. E binding by 22% and reduced HBA... No, seemed to reduce. Look at the screen. And reduced each HbA1c. HbA1c is the measure of your average blood glucose over the span of two to four months. Blood glucose particularly, by the way. Paul Saladino. What is the most auspicious, propitious approach to attaining an elevated HbA1c perniciously and insidiously over time? Eating fucking glucose. <sighs> by almost 6%. Quercetin, you're going to get this from things like onions. Yes, we know what quercetin is. Another polyphenol, by the way. There you go. Are you going to start talking about soy next? What's the one in soy called? Genistein? Yeah. You going to start talking about that? Shallots, asparagus, and definitely capers. Here's how it works. So the quercetin is a flavanol that ultimately combats... Yes, a flavanol. It's a type of polyphenol. Enol, enol, enol. Application in products as well. It doesn't... Combat is a cause and effect term. There are no studies to inform upon the risk of any heart health outcome or disease process as that relates to any aspect of human nutrition over any given period of time throughout the entire time human nutrition science has existed. There never has been, and there never f***ing will be. In order to do that, you have to perform an experiment on human beings. Some of the recent research is demonstrating... Up you don't know how to interpret the research, so shut up about the research. 60% reduction. No, ostensibly. And also it was an association and a vapid one at that. It was an arid, bleak one at that. AGEs that are... So Insipid. ...with sugar. Now this last... Asso not, not associated with sugar, that are the direct result of sugar consumption and the way that sugar interacts with the bodily tissues in the physiological system in which it is administered into. Stop it. It's rodent model, but it's really interesting. Okay, rodent model, just completely omit it then. I don't want to see it. Don't really care. To be extremely fair and extremely forgiving, sometimes they can show something. Again, it's all ostensible. So let's go ahead and see what he has to say either way. Researchers induced a super inflammatory diet in mice. Okay, now I don't want to hear it because in mice, their diet that is nowhere near the physiologically indicated diet for human beings, that being a 100% carnivorous diet consisting primarily of the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals with added fat in the form of butter, tallow, lard, suet, and ghee, saturated fat, the stuff solid room temperature, straight hydrocarbon chains, with added salt to taste and water. Their diet is nowhere near that, and so things that are going to induce inflammation into them are not going to induce inflammation into us. For example, they're not designed to eat a high fat diet, and therefore when administered a high fat diet, they present typically with inflammation as a result. So f off, Thomas. The fenugreek extract, it reduced the inflammation over 20%. It seemed to, Thomas. Why is it that hard to say? You just say that because it's sensational to say that and you profit off of sensationalism and other impressionable people that like dopaminergic cuts and the way that you look and the way that you articulate your thoughts. That's what you are doing and taking advantage of and exploiting. Anyway, Thomas DeLauer is the king of meretricious convoluting and also talking very fast so that you don't understand a word that he is saying. Now, the difference between me and him, someone that also talks fast versus him, is that I am actually correct. So, we're done with you, Thomas. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel. Please leave a like on this video. Please comment your thoughts below. And most importantly, subscribe to the Patreon. I have a $1 month tier, a $5 month tier, and an $8 month tier in order to receive access to ad-free uploads, one week early uploads, one extra video per week, uncensored content, and depending on the cut and depending on how much labor I would like to employ onto my editing process, because I do it all on my own and it's easily 40 hours a week, extended cut content. Not usual, but I do want to throw that in there because sometimes I actually will do it. It depends on how much acidity and sedge 
incredulousness, I guess I would like to employ. So follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, or X. The links are all in the description below. With that being said, join me next time when we react to someone else that does not understand human nutrition. In this case, human nutrition science and how to interpret it, even the basics, even the rudimentary inchoate ways in order to interpret science, any aspects of biochemistry, human physiology, anatomy, paleoanthropology, physics, all of that. And with that being said, join me then.